sky says, but will ensure that the sky delivers that which they promised to the ground. And the esteemed members of parliament are, rep are representing different regions. Some of us are not present today because we are on recess, but we are over 20 members of parliament who have dedicated their lives. They have agreed, they, have, they want to toil and moil, and they will never sit on their hands to see Kenyans suffer. Today, we are here. across the country, representing the interest of the aged also across the country. From the western region, uh, uh, Busia County, Honorable Catherine Omanyo, also representing the interest of Kenyans across this nation. We're also here with Honorable Amo from Stare, Amos Mwago, among your best, Kienda Uko Stare, even the Naitua, representing constituents from Nairobi County, representing Kenyans from within the nation. And we have a presser. Each member of parliament here will be given an opportunity to speak about issues, the state of the nation, matters affecting Kenyans, the issues of concern. We have a press that we will, I will read, then after that we'll give an opportunity to every member to say a word. Now we have, we have apologies from some members of parliament, uh, Mweshimiwa Kibagendi from uh, Kisi County. We have an apology from Mweshimiwa CNN, Charles Nguna, representing the Eastern region. We have an apology from... Uh, uh, Wanami, all the way from uh, Mula. Bumula, Bungoma. Bungoma County. We have an apology from Mweshimiwa Umi. We have an apology from Mweshimiwa Mwenje, Nairobi County. We have an apology from Mweshimiwa Kalebamisi. We, we have an apology from Mweshimiwa Kibagendi. We have an apology from Mweshimiwa Basil. And uh, other Waishimiwas from Waishimiwa Ledama or Lekina, and we also have an apology from Senator Eddie Okech. So we will read uh, this and we'll also give you a way forward on how we will be working as Team Ground moving forward. Our fellow citizens, let me once more start by expressing uh, my solidarity with the Kenyan youth and families who have lost their lives, sustained injuries been abducted or whose loved ones are still missing to date following the protests by the young people of Kenya who have been calling for good governance of their country. We are making this address in response to the many phone calls, text messages, social media uproar, and direct requests to us by distressed Kenyans who feel the political class has abandoned them after the recent constitution of a new cabinet by President Ruto. Number one, after suffering for many years because of bad politics, poor governance, corruption and incompetence in the management of the affairs of their country, the Gen Zs and millennials of Kenya came out in large numbers to exercise their Article 37 rights to assemble, demonstrate, picket and petition their leaders. In this bold move, they outlined the issues they wanted the president to address to reduce their suffering and to create opportunities for them. After withdrawing the draconian finance bill 2024 and dissolving his incompetent cabinet, President Ruto promised that he would engage in an open national dialogue to listen and get the issue at stake with young Kenyans before forming another cabinet. But in a show of contempt to the young people, we saw the president announce and put in a place a new cabinet without any consultation with the Gen Zs and millennials of this country. He has since held no dialogue or any engagement to ascertain the problems that led to the recent, recent protests. 
fellow Kenyans, before, before any grass has grown on the fresh graves of our youth recently killed, before people who are badly wounded in the protest have healed, and while so many families are still searching for their loved ones who are abducted by state agents, we have been shocked to see President Ruto return to his default mode of shuttling from one country to another. And on working from the top of vehicles, apparently launching invisible government projects. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to send a message to President Ruto in very simple but clear terms as the Gen Zs and millennials of Kenya have sent us to tell him that the young people of Kenya feel you are showing them contempt by ignoring all their issues and reverting to business as usual mode while they are hurting from the burdens imposed on them by the failures of your bad policies. The young people are not happy with the fact that you have refused to offer compensation for the families whose loved ones were shot and killed by the police on the instructions of your agents. The young people are unhappy that you have refused to pay for the medical expenses of the people who were wounded by the police. The Gen Zs and millennials of Kenya are unhappy because you have refused to free the youth who were abducted by the police. And you have refused to drop the trumped up charges against the peaceful demonstrators who went to the streets to ask for good governance of their country. The young people are shocked that you have refused to drop the new funding model of college and university education, which is forcing them to drop out of college. The young people are, are asking you to show them the practical steps you are taking to create jobs in Kenya to pull them out of this high unemployment. Mr. President, the young people are asking you to take immediate action to lower the high cost of living that is driving them crazy. The young people of Kenya are asking that you show them the reforms you are proposing to address corruption and looting of government resources by people who are under your direct supervision. They are asking that you show them the reforms you are undertaking to improve the competence and quality of your bureaucracy to enable the government to be responsive in service delivery and development. Mr. President, it is a matter of just a few months and another finance bill 2025 will be facing Kenyans again. The young people of Kenya are worried that on March 2025 will find them with no change at all and they will be forced to they will be forced back to the streets to protest poor governance and poor policies and to reject the finance bill <coughs> 2025 as a, as a youthful leader in this country together with other youthful leaders and other leaders we want to appeal we want to appeal to you in a special way that you take your time off the top of your vehicles and sit down with your top advisors, including your new cabinet, and review and change the bad policies that your administration unleashed on Kenyans for the last two financial years. Kindly consider the welfare of the children of this country. Please engage the youth in this country and show them that you care for them. Take practical steps to demonstrate that you have the interests of the youth of Kenya at heart before you revert to your default mode of, sta of stating in public things, stating in public things that you don't mean and you don't intend. Mr. President, walk the talk. Swing, don't sing. As, as a Christian, we say you do not do what you say in order to restore the vital trust that should exist between the people and their government. We want to remind you of the words of J.F. Kennedy that those who make peaceful revolutions impossible make violent revolutions inevitable. Do not tempt the young people of Kenya too much. They have given you a break to reassess your priorities and get things right. They are shocked that you can't get anything right. And lastly, I want to say that should you fail to deliver to Kenyans, 
There's only one person that I know that will be easily defeated in 2027. Defeating you, Mr. Ruto, in 2027 will be easier than reciting vowels. Any living thing that is capable of locomoting or moving from one place to the other will defeat you in 2027. Even if you take a goat and put and dress the goat and put it on the ballot, will defeat you in 2027. Thank you and God bless you. Let me take this opportunity to give Mweshimiwa Mudoni. Ah, sorry, sorry, Gadoni. I'm, I'm used to my wife's name. <laughs> She's called Mudoni. Gadoni Wamushomba to address you.